So building it, right, and especially this year, it sounds like a lot of optimization as well. What do you see the end of 2022, like especially for scalability and, and governance, those two things that we were just talking about? Do you, do you yeah. see a lot of progress being done? Do you see? I, I think everything will get done that I outlined, the side chains, the pipelining, the import endorsers, the library optimization, Hydra and Mithril. Now there's degrees and flavors, like there'll be more Hydra stuff to do, but at least you'll be able to use Hydra for something like microtransactions. Mithril will be probably completely finished because it's a finite scope of work. And we had to bring on some sophisticated contractors for it like Galois, but they're getting it done. Um, pipelining is just, you know, shades. You can always optimize pipelining and do more in those heartbeats. And the same for input endorsers, there's always ways to optimize that, but some version of it will ship. And at that point, I think we'll be in an exceedingly strong position to match what we see with Solana and these other platforms, uh, but have the added benefit of being actually decentralized and, uh, and having real theory and strong foundations behind it. And uh, also the extensibility of the protocol, like what we wrote in Ouroboros Kronos or Leos or uh, what we were writing in uh, Omega, uh, these other protocol flavor. There's an obvious path to introduce them which improves the utility, usability, and security of the system. So we don't have to redesign the protocol or anything like that. So you don't give up a lot, but you get a lot. And yeah. we know how to do it. And say, and I would be personally exceedingly disappointed if uh, there were delays in that, because I don't think there should be. And there's no reason for that to be, because we understand the work. The code base is in a very good state. For the most part, technical debt is pretty low. There's great product management. There's good project management, good program management. QA teams know what to do. We have a good release cycle with February, June, and October, you know, and we have a great test net that's running, and it's uh, it, everything seems to be coming together quite well there. Um, for governance, that's a little harder because I can't compel somebody. I can't pull you out of your seat and say, go vote. I can tell you to do it. I can have it come to a podcast like this and say, like, you should do that. We must. I can, you know, do my best Kennedy impersonation and say, well, that was pretty good because it's hard. You know, I can do that, but it, you know, I can't force you to do it. I don't have the uh, voting mandate or something like that. So you build it and then you see who shows up and you just see where the numbers are and you, you go with what you got, you know, and that's what we do with U S elections. It, it, less than half of the American people voted in the last presidential election. We still have a president. So, you know, allow voting, and it's the ADA holder's decision whether to participate or not. And it, you do education and great experiences, and you build these tools out, and you just see where the cards fall. So we know what we need to do to build a great bureaucracy to execute long-term an open-source project that is Cardano and how one would go about funding that bureaucracy, kind of like how America funds itself. So we have a kind of an idea about that. And, you know, next six months is about putting that idea together and getting it done. It's a lot harder to, to actually get meaningful participation. Because even if you get 50% vote, look at the U.S. voting system. Well, I voted for him because I like his hair. I voted for him because his last name is strong. You know, Well, you know, we haven't had a guy under six foot two as president in a while. So I, I, I wanted to vote for the short guy. You know, it's, it, meanwhile, if somebody's like, I, uh, I spent a lot of time reading all those books on Medicare. I read 26 <laughs> books on how the healthcare system works. And I carefully thought about foreign policy. I went to the, 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 the Woodrow Wilson foreign policy school over at Princeton, and I got a PhD in it. And I feel very comfortable to have a pine on North African strategy and in in our strategy in the Northern Triangle with El Salvador and Honduras. And uh, your vote counts exactly the same as the yeah. guy who voted. You know. So there's this, there's this concept of rational ignorance that comes into play. So it's an incentives problem participation as much as it is an access problem and a usability problem of what incentives do people have to participate in the system. So you do your best to create incentives, and when you get them right, it's magic. And when you get them wrong, you have low participation. So there's some experiments and bets you do, and you see what happens with this uh, type of thing. And oh, you know, if we get it right, it'll be magical. Even if we get it wrong, there's still already 70,000 people. That's a hell of a lot better than Ethereum or Bitcoin or any of these other ecosystems that purport to be decentralized. For the most part, there's only a dozen or two people that uh, that actually make decisions. It's the two-pizza rule. If you can feed all your decision-makers with two pizzas, you're probably, you're probably doing decentralization wrong. Yeah, so true. 